fight for his son or give the son the money to pay the fine with. Okay, there's nothing unjust about that. Okay, what would be unjust is if the, if, if the judge said, you, my son has committed the crime, I'm going to punish someone else for it. That would be unjust. Okay, well, you know it's what? It's not unjust you know? when the judge takes the punishment upon himself. Okay? Okay. That is what right. God the Father has done. He's taken the punishment here's, upon here's, himself. Here's the thing. Okay? You know, you can, you can hang your hat on, on that one scripture. No, no, no. But, there's many. But, no, no. It's but, not just that. But, but here's, the, here's the thing, brother. You know, there's no other name given... That, that, that you can't call on any other name under heaven given to men to save anyone except the name of Jesus. Even my, even in my Bible, it says anyone that calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Shall be saved from what? Shall be saved from what? What are we being saved from? Yeah, so, right, okay, so let's go to Ithacal. Okay, it says here, the son is a kill 18 verse 20, Thanks. right? Thanks. Right, anyway, it says here, 1820. Shall I read it or shall I wait for you guys? Go ahead. This Ready? is God's instruction right, okay. to the judges of Israel, okay? Okay, right. It says here, The soul who, shall, the soul who sins shall die. Right? So, so from that, we're going to read further on. But it said, the soul that sins, that soul is responsible for their own iniquity. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. So what do you understand? Okay, before we continue, before we continue, tell me what you understand just by reading that okay, verse. first of all, first of all, in this day, there was only atonement for sin once a year. Once a year, through sacrifice. Going to the temple and sacrificing animals. True or not true? Does it mention sacrifice? Excuse me. True or not true? About... When you're talking, I mean, you can't just insert this and think that it's a a, a whole separate item no, 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 no. from the Bible. I'm not right? saying if that. You no, can't no, no. I understand. So, no, no. So, I understand. So, I understand. So you're you're in the middle of a conversation, so you can't yeah. you can't separate the the dialogue of what's going on right here oh, right? I haven't. and make it a mock. You know what I'm saying? Oh no 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 no. Okay, I haven't. Okay, okay, what okay. I'm saying to you, right? No no no. Let me answer your question. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I understand your question. Okay yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So right here, first of all, uh, the point that I want to make is that sin was only atoned for once a year. Now, if my brother sins, yeah. I am not responsible for his sin, okay? Yeah. That is his sin. He has to own that and carry the weight of his sin, right? In the middle, so if, if atonement happens right now, yeah. right? And all of our sins are forgiven through this sacrifice that's, that happens only once a year. Yeah. And then he sins the next day, the next moment. Yeah. That he's responsible for his own. Being his father, I am not responsible for his so sin. What? Hold on, hold on. Okay. And then, now, that's Old Testament, right? Jesus comes and steps on the scene. And then he says, I'm dying for everybody. Muslims, Greek, whoever. Everybody has an opportunity Where's to have that? John 3, 16. That Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, uh, uh, repent and repent for your, so your sins could be forgiven. John I mean, 3, 16 doesn't say that. John 3, 16 John 3, 16 says, for so God loved... Okay, hold on. For, for, John, I know so what God it says, loved bro, the world, for God so that loved the world. Hold on that that one second. I know he it. sent his only begotten son. That whosoever whoever believes, believes in him... him how would they have an eternal right. life? Hold on one second, hold on. How would they have it? 
with, you're conflating two issues here, no, and I'll tell you what that sorry, is, sorry. right? I'm, not I'm talking about how is sins dealt with in the, in the eyes of God. Sins are dealt with in the eyes of God, according to this verse, is by repentance. Not, hold on one second, one second, hold on. One second. What about sacrifice? Bear, bear with me, bear with me. John 3.16 is talking about whoever believes in him, right? We have no issues with this yeah. because I know you believe in Jesus. Go to Acts chapter four. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I, I, I wanna. No, bro, because I'm trying to answer your question, but you're so hung up on thinking you're right here, and you're not. No, but I want to continue reading. No, but hold on one second. I just want to. I will go to Acts, but I just want to continue reading this for well, a second. Let's deal, let's deal with it. Let's go back and forth. Let me let me disprove your theory on. on but what I haven't you just finished. Said. But I haven't finished the theory yet. But you uh, mean I need to finish it when I show you Acts chapter four? No, but four. if you allow me to finish, <laughs> allow me to finish, and then I promise I will go to this first. Okay. Fair? Okay. Right. I'll read on anyway. Or you can go eat. Maybe he can help you yeah. go to that verse. That's, right? That's right. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father shall suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Now, this is the key part here. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sins, that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right. That's a foreshadow. Right? That's a foreshadow. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his transgressions shall he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteous that he has done shall live. Awesome. So I what, love that. So, okay. I'm so glad you so, pointed so, that so, out. So, my so what, what do you understand by that? That is not true or not true. True or not true. What's not true? Do you believe? No, I'm asking you, true or not true? Right. You are such a Bible scholar. I'm not. I, I don't, love it. No, I don't no, no, claim no, no. to be a Bible scholar. I think you are. I don't let, claim let, to let be a Bible scholar. Let me dun you with that. You're a Bible scholar. I'm not a Bible scholar. True, true or not true? The, the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the coming of Jesus. True or not true? It, it, it depends what, what verse you are alluding to. This is one of them. How? Because the righteous... Let, let me read this. Can well, I read go, this? Go read it, read it. Where, where is it at? You're talking about 18... But if a wicked person turns away... Now listen to this. Think yeah. of it. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not being funny. Okay? okay, go on, read it. But if a wicked person turns away from his sins that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live. He shall not not die meaning his sins will not be imputed on him true or not true no it's saying no, 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 no. That if you ask God to forgive you hold on I'm, 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 I'm responding if you ask the Creator to forgive you for your sins meaning a sacrifice is not as you remember remember you said earlier in the conversation right? I'm gonna remind you of something that you said you said earlier there was sometimes there was sacrifice of animals and yeah. for, and for the remission of I'm not yeah. denying that okay. but what I'm saying to you is that Seeking forgiveness from God, because Christians they say to the Muslims, "Oh, God will not forgive you because you're impure because of your sins." However, God here is saying, "I didn't say that." I'm not saying you. I said Christians say. Some Christians. I don't know what Christians are saying. I don't know what Christians are saying. I don't know if that statement is true. I've never heard it, so I can't validate that to be the truth. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is that. A blood sacrifice is not a necessity because we can see here from this sin, but it's not because God. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, because I see this guy speaking on your behalf. So I just want to finish what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you, right, is that a blood sacrifice, according to this verse, is not a necessity because God says, if you turn away from your sins and you ask God to forgive you, God will not remember. So who am I, whose words am I going to take? His words. Here's or the God's thing. words. Here's the thing. That is a true statement, but what you're not, what, you're not Would you agree or disagree? You're not connecting the, the dots. Let me connect the dots for you. Okay. What, what's the now, dots? can I have the floor without being interrupted? I, I, go ahead. Yeah. I'm not interrupting. You. Okay. Here's the thing. The Old Testament was a, a type and shadow of what was to come. When we repent of our sins today, we don't need a blood sacrifice. There was only one, and the last sacrifice was Jesus Christ. That is the last sacrifice, or was the, the last Lamb sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God, right? And so his sacrifice 
remitted our sins for anyone for anyone that would ask for forgiveness. So this is true, especially today. It is true. So once I ask the Lord, forgive me of my sins, my sins are remitted. And then my part is not to turn back. That's what repent means. Change directions. Turn from yeah. your sin. Make a whole 180 and go in a whole nother direction. So once, so then that means I am now made the righteousness of Christ because of his blood, right? I am, I'm, I'm, I'm made just, I'm justified because of his blood. So right. all of what you just read is true. Right. All of what you just read is true. So this is a type and shadow of what was to come. Right. So then you go to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Okay, so Salvation Acts, yeah. is, not, is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Okay, so what, sorry, what's it say? Acts 4.12. Okay. What's it say? Read it to me. Acts 4.12. What does yours say? Uh, Acts 4.12. And what did you just have? Acts 4.24? Acts 4.12. Oh, 4.12. Okay, no problem. Here it says, this is New International Version, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 2.38 Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, yeah. for the forgiveness of your sins. Okay. Yeah? Right. So, so here, we are made the righteousness of Christ. Right. Why? Because so, of the blood of Jesus. Right. So, right. Now, you have a problem, and I'll tell you why. And I'm, I don't I, have a problem. Okay. I'll, right. I think you have a misunderstanding. Do, do, do you believe that Jesus is part of the triune Godhead? I do. Right. This is where the problem lies, right? Because you believe that Jesus died for your sins, you are in essence saying that one third of God died on the cross. Because you believe that Jesus is part of the triune God. Even though the Bible clearly says in Psalms chapter 90, it says God is everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. Death cannot cease God, yeah. right? Do you, would you accept that? No. Okay. So, so, so what I want you to do, what I would like you to do, explain to me, right, that how can, number one, God die on the cross, right? How can God die on the cross? How can God call upon another God? Because remember, when Jesus was on the cross, what was his words or his final words? Eli and Eli. David said, David said, you know, if my Lord says to his Lord, Bro, you're, 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 you're misaligning scripture now. I'm not misaligning we can, anything. We can sit here all night long. No, I'm asking you a very specific question. When Jesus was on the cross, did he not say, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why have forsaken me? Right. And at the end, he says, the last words of Psalm 22 as well, it's finished. Okay. Right, okay. So, so, it's the last word. So we have contradictory, we have contradictory Psalm ending. Psalm 22 describes the crucifixion. Because one verse says that it's, end, it's, it's finished. That another verse said that he gave up the spirit and it was, I'm yes. sorry, and it was that. And then there was another verse where he said, Eli, Eli, Limada, Sabachthani, and he died. So we've got three contradictory endings how Jesus actually no, no, died. No, he didn't say that at That's the end. He didn't say that at the end. It wasn't said at the end. Okay. Did Jesus... He did quote Psalm 22. Right. Yeah. Did, did he die? Psalm 22 prophesies his crucifixion. Okay. okay. Did, he, did he die after that? Jesus died sometime after that. Right. It wasn't immediately did at he, that point. Was there any words after that statement? Yes. What was it? Yeah, the other words which you, which you mentioned, okay. That's not the last of words of Jesus, okay. There were words of Jesus on the cross, anyway. you're right. There are words of Jesus on the cross. Right. We have, we have... Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. I'll wait till she finishes and then we'll get back to what we're saying. Yeah. So, sister, I want to ask you. All right, let me read this to you. Okay, read it. Yeah. But when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things, what first? This is. Verse, just read verse 11 all the way to the end. All right. Oh, what's it? But when Christ appears as high priest of the good things that have come through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, not this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not by means of bloods and goats and calves, meaning not by the former animal sacrifice, right? but by means of his own blood, thus securing eternal redemption. For if the bloods of goats and bulls 
and the sprinkling of defiled persons, uh, the ashes of Hector, sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead works and serve the living God. So right here is saying, so and that was saying- how does that prove that Jesus is God? I don't, what? How does that prove that Jesus is God? I don't think you're really wanting to know how Jesus is God. No, I but, think, no, but yeah. I'm asking you because no, that, it's a genuine question I'm asking. I'm not, I'm not trying to like trick you or anything like that. No, no, I, I'm, I, I can't be tricked. No, you're, that's you're not no, me, no but I'm genuinely asking, show me an evidence where Jesus Christ, may the peace and blessing of God be upon him, show me one evidence where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Did he, he say this? Uses exact words. Does he does he say this? He does claim to be God. He does claim to be God, and he does allow people to worship him. But he does not use exact words. Let me keep reading. Does he say? Does he say? I am not God. Do not worship me. If I accept my worship, it's just a waste of time. Sorry. That is a clear sign that he claimed to be God. He accepted worship. Okay. He accepted. He accepted Thomas calling him my Lord and my God. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. One second. Hold on. I can't have it. so much people. Sorry, I cannot have so much people jump in this conversation. We're just dealing with one person at a time, right? So, what I'm asking you, show me in the New Testament where Jesus says, "I am God," and then we can obviously contemplate on the verse. Right, okay. So Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. Okay. Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. Who is the Good Shepherd according to the Bible? Sorry, I, I can't okay. speak to multiple people. I'm sorry. Yeah. Your friend tried to jump in. You're right, jumping in. Some this. people are jumping in. Okay, listen to this. For in him, him Jesus, yeah. the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and all authority. In him also you were circumcised with the circumcision not made by hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism and which you are also raising him. So let me back up. For in him, the whole deity, the whole deity. The whole deity. So, so we're when he was on earth, we're not talking deity. about so part. Of, so hold on. We're not, yeah, we're, we're talking, so we're not talking about one said. third. We're talking about the fullness. The full deity the was full in him. The full deity. Okay, no problem. Dwells bodily. So here's your proof. So yeah. you can't say that. Well, you're talking about one third of a god. Okay. All right. You're Zaris. talking about the full godhead. No problem. In one, but you, no, 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 not one problem. Don't be so easily dismissive. You asked me to prove it to no, you. No, no, no. I'm going to respond to you. I'm not dismissing it. Okay. Would you like a response? Hold on. Let's deal with this. No, 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 I'm not done. I'm not done. Oh. <laughs> no, if you wanted to read his whole version in his, in his, let me give him mine. No, we're not trying to win an argument. We're trying to present it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Understood. Understood. What is it? Okay, so Mark 2, verse 5 to 6. You can open it in the Bible. Uh, Mark 2, verse 5 to 6. Okay, so... Sorry, can I just discuss the, the first verse that you, you dealt with? And then we can deal with the second one. Right, so you said the full deity... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, so you said the full deity was enclosed, enclosed in Jesus, is that correct? Yeah, right. that's what the Bible says. Right, so when he was on earth, was the full deity clothed in him according to that verse yeah he was fully god and a hundred percent man at no the same problem time. no problem when jesus was asked about the day of judgment he said no one knows the hour nay not even the son the only person who knows the hour is who the father alone That's right. so according to that verse it says the full de de deity was dwelling in him yeah. so how come jesus did not know the day of judgment hold on one second how come Jesus didn't know the day of judgment if the full deity was enclosed in him while he was on earth? Okay. So when Jesus stepped down into earth. So am I dealing with this guy? Okay. Wait, wait, one second. Do you know the answer to this? Or are you referring it to him? I'm okay, go on. Go ahead. So when the omnipresent God, God is everywhere, that's what he believe. When he takes on flesh, he's going to deny some of his attributes. Okay, so, so, 
Yes. Here's, here's what I would say to your question. What's your response? He, he What's your is response? fully God at all times. He's fully God, fully man at the same time. Here's the thing. God is My so sister, vast. How did he not know the day of judgment if he's fully... Because he if, answered as a son, bro. When he walked, when he, when he answered as a son, he died as the son of God. No, no. You said in that verse earlier... But he is fully he, God at the same time. Don't mistake. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We are trying to limit... Answered with that scripture. Yeah, can I, can I just yes. Go ahead, yeah. Come no, on. She, she already answered about the, 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 the ex explanation of, of Jesus Christ being God's Son and God Himself in the answer with the scripture where it says that the fullness of, of the deity dwell in bodily form. Okay? Yes. Now, that's the answer right. she gave of, of that. And no, okay. listen. So then, how do you then respond yeah. to if yeah. the fullness of deity was in yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. on earth? Fine, I have no issues with that because that's what your scripture says. However, however, when Jesus was asked about the day of judgment, I, so we, we, we can see evidently that the lack of deity was not present at that moment because clearly because clearly no, Jesus would have known that that is not true listen when Jesus was arrested like a human being he said he Pilate said to him he says are you a king he said look I can call a legion of angels if I wanted to I have the power you only have the authority that my father has given you he spoke as a son so so at the end of the day he is fully God fully man no, no, sister, at the same time I think you're I, I, really no, just you're dismissing the point. I'm not dismissing the and point. And maybe I'm if you can't answer, that's fine. I'm answering the question. I'm fully confident in my answer. Okay. And that the, right. he is both God and man at the same time. He said, I can call a legion of angels. I have the authority to call legions of angels right now if okay. I wanted to. But I'm, I'm going to die as a son. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just want to, I'm not, I'm, I, uh, yeah. I just want to share two verses with you. Go ahead. Okay? I'm, just, okay? I'm all ears. I'm I have three ears. answers, by the way, to your question. Okay. Just just three uh, answers. I can't. Don't worry. Sorry. Yeah. There's so much people speaking, so no, 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 come in, come in. Is that, you know, it's just like, I can't speak to three people at the same time. Yeah, so I do have answers to your question. You, you really got to be respectful to the conversation. Go ahead. So just um, to answer, just listen to this. So this is this is John, uh, chapter 10. Okay, this is what this was what happened to Jesus Christ. Is that this, the Jewish people at the time started to, wanted to stone Jesus, okay? And this is what, we are not stoning you for any good work. Okay. They replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. This was Jesus Christ's response. I'm going to go straight from this to another verse, okay? okay. And then you can respond. No Jesus answered them, it is not written, it, sorry, is it not written in your law? I have said you are God's. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said, I am God's son. Do okay. not, do not, do you, do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Just wait, I'll let you respond in a minute. Go oh, no, to no, no, the, no. the verse I said about Mark 2. Mark. Yeah. Chapter two. So it's about Jesus healing the paralytic man, okay? Yeah. But before he heals the paralytic man from his paralysis, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And so, so it's just the two parallels there yeah. that Jesus Christ was both on this earth as the Son of God, but existed before he came here as as part of the Godhead himself. I can show you many other verses to wait to to to, to show you where it says this in the Bible. I, I can even go to John. 1 John 1 there's, there's so many places even in the Old Testament so and many Muslims will say well the New Testament's been changed it's it's not accurate but even in the Jewish scriptures you know many Jews are coming to faith in Jesus Christ as the Messiah yeah. through one verse in the Old Testament Isaiah 53 where it actually is the only person that's ever fulfilled the prophecy of the Messiah is Jesus Christ sure. so can, can yeah. I respond hold on hold on I want to respond to your points yeah. 
Otherwise, it'll be too much for me yeah, to like, no, respond sure, to. Sure. Right. Thank you. So, right. So you mentioned about you mentioned John chapter ten verse thirty, where Jesus speaks about uh, the, 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 the whole chapter. Yeah, the whole chapter. We will discuss that. And he read a verse where Jesus forgave sins. Is that correct? Yes, right. Okay. Let's discuss that. Right. Yeah, let's discuss that. Jesus said. Jesus said in John chapter five verse thirty. Yeah. Jesus says, "I can of myself do nothing." I judge as I hear, but my judgment is honest because I'm not seeking my will, but I'm seeking the one who said me. Therefore, we've got clarification from Jesus' own mouth that, that he cannot of himself do nothing. I judge as I hear, right? So whatever, so whatever Jesus, so, 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 so whatever Jesus hears from God, this is what he speaks, right? That's number one. Number two, when it says that Jesus forgave sins, it wasn't Jesus that was forgiving those sins. Because remember, in John, let me finish. Was. I, was, I was patient. I did yeah, listen. Let him, let him right? speak. He's listening to us. Let him speak. Yeah, You're right. So Jesus, right, did not say, I forgive you your sins. No. He says, your sins have been forgiven. Right? Because this goes in alignment with John chapter 5, verse 30, where he says, I cannot myself do nothing. I judge as I hear. Yeah. Also, the disciples were able to forgive sins in John chapter 20, verse 22. Did what was not the disciples able to forgive so, sins? So it shows. Can, can, well, sure. Before you turn to that, can, you, can I show you just one scripture? And I want you to well, read well, this. Hold out on, hold on, sister. Okay. Let me let, let me read. Sure, sure. Let me read this because obviously. All right, go ahead. Right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not working independently. John okay? 20. Jesus says he does nothing of himself. He's saying, together with the Father and the Spirit, I do these things, okay? Yeah. Your text is bigger. Yeah. It says, John 20, 22, and when he had said, hold on, he says, peace be with you. That's what Muslims say, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh -huh. Right? So Jesus is actually a Muslim here. He said, Assalamu Alaikum. He said, Assalamu Alaikum. Right? Right. You laugh because you, you know it's true. You know it's true. People say the same. Yeah. Shalom. Yeah, they say Shalom. And Jesus said, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So anyway, Muslims anyway, anyway, it from the wait, Jews and the wait, Christians. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right. It says, Peace be with you. And the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said, when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins, yeah. ah, remember? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. He says, oh, yeah. If you forgive sins of any, yeah. they are forgiven. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, going back to what you said earlier, that is not proof that Jesus can forgive sins. That doesn't mean that he is God because Jesus gave the disciples the authority to do what? Right. Forgive sins. Okay, so then, right, wait, okay, hold on. Okay. Now well, you how, mentioned, could, how could Jesus give authority to forgive sins if he is not God? Because God gave him the authority to do it. Remember? He said, okay. remember, <laughs> Jesus said, all power was given to me from who? Who gave Jesus the authority? Okay. I'm gonna answer there you go. Question. I'm gonna That's answer your answer. Question for you. I want you to read this for us. I want you to go to. Wait, wait, I want to do John 10 30. I want to do John 10 30 because that was the last part she, she spoke okay. about. Right? So. Your whole verse about Jesus forgiving sins is completely debunked because the disciples were able to forgive sins and that doesn't mean, you will Jesus never then claim you will never claim that they are God no one ever claimed the disciples are God but yet they had the authority because God gave Jesus the authority according to the Bible Right, my last point is this if we go to John chapter 10 because my sister over here mentioned John chapter 10 right so let's go to John chapter 10 verse 30 uh, 30. Okay. I and the Father are one. You're looking for that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll get there, don't worry. I'm just trying to help you. Is that the best you're looking no, for? No, it's fine. I, no, I know where it is. That's where I was going, but go ahead. Right, let's start from verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand my father who has given them to me is greater than all notice here jesus saying my father is greater than all including jesus himself right say including jesus himself but never mind carry on uh, okay just a side note john chapter 14 verse 28 jesus says, my father is greater than i so that's a correction for you right it says i will give them eternal life and they will perish they will never perish 
and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. I and my father are what? One. Now, the question is, right, what are their oneness in what? Are their oneness in essence or their oneness in purpose? Now, Pardon? I would I would say that they are one in you, oneness in purpose, not in physical unity. Because we know that if you believe that Jesus is Jesus and the Father are physical in unity, that means the Father died on the cross, and I'm sure you don't believe that. If you believe that, that makes you a heretic, right? Anyway, let's continue. The Jews picked up stones. Did you notice? Sorry, did you notice that Jesus gives them eternal life? Yeah, Jesus but, gives them eternal okay. life, just like Jesus said for his sins. Yeah. All right, yeah. Right. Okay. Then you can yeah. Re yeah, refer. Yeah, because otherwise we just end up not doing anything. Yeah. Right. It says here, the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Right. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? So Jesus is questioning their intent. Why are you stoning me? I've been among you. I've been doing all these wonderful things. What, why, what's the reason for this? The Jews replied. The Jews answered him, It is not for good works that we are to stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you, because a mere man, makest yourself God. Yeah. So now my question is this. Is this not an accusation? It's an accusation okay, so, so, well, let me, let me answer. so it's really hot. I really want to go in the shade. Yeah. 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 Same, same. Let's I, move over here. Right I, here. I, I am so hot, you know, and I feel like I'm going to boil. I'm going to move right there. Right. I might have to move the camera so I feel like I'm going to fail. Sorry, it's so hot. I feel like I'm going to... You know, Jesus was often accused by the Jews of, um, of claiming to be God, of, of claiming to be the Son of God. And that's, that was the whole reason in the end why the Jewish people actually crucified Jesus was because yeah. of blasphemy. You know, even in the even when he was arrested um, in, in the, by Pontius Pilate, he was in that room and he was he was asked. He, they, were, they told him. They said to him, um, "Come on, now is an opportunity for you to defend yourself." And actually. You, you can save yourself right now by saying that these accusations are not true. Hold on one second. And, yeah, no, no, no okay. let me speak. Okay, go and he didn't ever defend himself. He didn't provide any justification. He didn't at that what, point. In this he, verse? No, no, no. In, in, a, in, in the chapter where Jesus was arrested for, for, for these blasphemies that we're talking about right now. Right. So listen, in that, in that time, he never once said that the things that they accuse me of were not true. He never at what any point tried to defend himself. Let me let me just But he did but he does though. Sorry, I, I might have to correct you on this. Okay. Because just pull up the verse where, where Jesus was arrested and questioned by Pontius Okay, yeah, Pilate. yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. And we can bring that in. Oh well. sorry, it's just so much cooler, it's just so Psalms, doesn't he? Yeah, Psalms eighty two. Oh Psalm eighty two. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So basically it yeah. says here, right? The Jews answered him, it's not for good works that we are going to stone you. Yeah but for blasphemy, because you, being a mere man, makes yourself God. First of all, this is not a confirmation that Jesus claimed to be God. This is an accusation against him. We cannot take the accusation of the hostile enemy, the people who don't like Jesus, the people who want to see Jesus fail, you're taking their testimony over your Lord and Saviour. That doesn't make any sense. I know, but well, let me... But, okay. Hold on, let's continue. Because I can answer. I, can, I, 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 want, I, want, I want your yeah, response. Okay. I do, but I just want to read the Let's Jesus answer. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so the, Jesus wasn't mute at this point. He did actually provide the response. He says, Jesus answered them. It is not written in your law. I said that you are God. If you go to Psalm chapter 82, the Jews are called what? They are called God's children of the Most High. Right? So, just for your information, right? when someone is called God in the Old Testament, that doesn't mean or necessitate that they're actually God. Because we know that Moses is called Elohim. Are you aware of this? Moses is called Elohim. And Elohim is a word that is used by the Creator Himself in Genesis chapter 1. If you go to Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, it says, See, I shall make you an Elohim unto Pharaoh. So the word God translated here into Hebrew into English doesn't mean doesn't mean that that person is actually God Almighty. Do you, do you exactly, but he's representing. Yeah. 
thank you. Can I bring another verse in? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, Jesus actually and I can see you'd burst into say something. Yeah, yeah. I am. No, this is the thing. So, so Jonah, I, I mean, I could, we could dialogue all day. It's actually really interesting. It's interesting, yeah. Because I, 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 could, I, I, I don't want to bring too many scriptures in. But this is just one, okay? This was a response of Jesus Christ, okay? He said this. He said, in fact, let me read that a little bit earlier because there's a whole story behind it. But Jesus replied, oh, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, who, who you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day as he saw it was it saw it and was glad. Okay, let, let me let me tell you this was what they responded with to Jesus. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said, very truly I say to you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. What does Jesus mean by that? What, who was he? If How could he exist before Abraham? Yet he claimed before Abraham was born, I am, which actually, if you look at the translation in the original Hebrew, okay, it actually means he was claiming to be God. That very word, I am, is the word for God. He, he's, Jesus, I, mean, I, could, I could go to another verse where Jesus said that again when they tried to kill him. He said, I who, you, you, I who stand before you, I am he. He said it so many times. So, Shall we discuss that? Yes, let's discuss it. Okay, right. Give me the Hebrew word for the word I am. Genesis uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 if I remember rightly. Actually no, give me the Greek, give me the Greek and then give me the Hebrew. Greek is ego okay. I know that off the top of my head. Okay, before you find it, okay, hold on. Let's let's stop you there. Before you find it, let wait one second. I'm gonna respond, I'm gonna respond to you. I'm gonna respond to you. Because the only way he ever existed beforehand as another deity and another being, or he existed beforehand as God. So so I wanna I wanna know how you would answer that. So, be interesting. Just because, just because someone existed before Abraham yes. or existed even at the beginning of the creation doesn't mean that they're a God. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. If you look at Jeremiah, right, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, right, it states that when I created you, I knew you in your mother's womb and I made you a prophet to the children of Israel. So. The fact that God knew a, a new Jeremiah beforehand doesn't mean that Jeremiah is God. We, we can, hold on one second. We can exist in the knowledge of God, but that doesn't mean that you are God. That's number one. Number two, Melchizedek. Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter seven, verse one. It says that he has no beginning of days, neither does he have end of life, right? Melchizedek has no beginning, no end. Can we say that he is God? No. Right. Number three. If we go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, right? In the book of Proverbs, it says that the wisdom of God existed in the beginning of time. Does it mean that the wisdom of God is God? No. Right? So just because someone existed prior to the creation, doesn't mean that they are God. Now, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 58. So I've given you evidences to demonstrate Right? That just because someone existed before the creation, it doesn't mean that they're the creator. Right. It, so it now, does, hold, only hold God on. Created, hold, hold therefore, on. only God is there before hold creation. Hold on, one second. One second. Yeah? Only God is before creation. One second. Okay. One second. It says here, right, let's, let's read this carefully, right? It says, but you have not known him, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced 
that he would see my day. So it seems to me here that there's a prophecy that Abraham would rejoice to see Jesus' day in the future. Would you disagree with that? Okay, let's continue. Let's continue, right? So we're talking about Jesus. Uh, Abraham is rejoicing that one day that Jesus will come in the future. So in a way, it's just like a prophecy in a way, right? Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and he was glad. So Abraham saw that Jesus would come in the future and he was glad. No problem. Abraham said God will provide. So the Jew, yeah. hold on one second, hold on one second. It says, so the Jews said to him, one second, it says, so the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? First of all, where in this sentence did Jesus claim to have seen Abraham in this sentence? Nowhere. Hold on one second. It said that Abraham will rejoice to see my day. He never said here that he, he's seen Abraham. So that's a misunderstanding from the Jews. I'll read it again. It says, so the Jews said to him, you are not 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus never came to see Abraham. Never did. You can go all the way further up to 56 and 55, 54. He doesn't say that. So that was a lie that the Jews made against Jesus. But Jesus, that was an accusation again that John chapter 10 verse 30. Let's continue. It says, so the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham? Question mark. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus himself went out of the temple. Now, let's go to the Greek, because the only way we can solve... I've got the, I've got the Hebrew interlinear yes. here, okay? Yes. So we can see the Hebrew. No problem. Okay. I am, the name of God, okay? Okay, good. Yeah. I'll bring up the Hebrew as well. Let, but let's go to the Greek, because Jesus... John, hey, me. In John, the Greek it's hey, wait, one me. second, one okay, second. I know, my head. Jesus wrote his... Okay. John wrote his gospel in what language? Pardon? John drawing. Greek. John, right. Okay. Yeah. So if right, if I showed you elsewhere in the Bible that someone else said ego ema, would you claim? That, would you say that they're God? Not necessarily because ego emi means I am. There you go. Thank you very much. You say, I Thank am. I am a man. You know, I am. Right. Uh, six feet tall. I'm not really six feet tall. Thank you very much. Seven actually. You, you're but, actually uh, proving you know, my point. Like, I am. You're actually proving by my point. Itself does not necessarily mean God. But when Jesus says before Abraham was. I am. Yeah. Clearly, that is not a normal construction of a sentence, is it? Yes, it is, and I'll tell no, you why. It's not a normal construction. Shall I prove it to you? Shall I prove it to you? Right. Let's. Let, you want to go? Let's go there. Before right. Abraham was. Wait. Hold on. I am. Hold on. Hold on. In John chapter nine, verse nine, and we see a mistranslation. We see a mistranslation in the translation. Why do I say this? In John chapter nine, verse nine, the blind man. What? What was the response of the blind man to Jesus? when he was healed. Uh, Actually, let's go there. Let's go there. It's not, that's not, I think you've got the wrong verse there. You've got the right chapter, but the wrong verse. No, I haven't. John chapter 9, verse 9. John chapter 9, verse 9 says... What does it say? Um, some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. And what was his but response? He himself insisted, I am the man. Right, stop yes. there. Yeah. Ego am I. Yeah. What is it, what is it translated as? I am. So why have they put something else that he that wasn't there? They used the word man. Okay. Man is not translated as ego a man. No, that's right. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, just in the, in the Greek, I think it just says ego a me. It doesn't say the man. Right, good. Okay. This is the translators. Right. right. So why in John 8:58 did they not translate that word as the same as in John chapter 9 verse 9? Because it's not the same sentence. It in, is. In John chapter 9, in John chapter 10, he says, Before Abraham was, I am. No, 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 no. You're misunderstanding me completely. It's not the same sentence. Ego am I mean? What does ego am I mean? It, well, in this case, it means I agree, okay? He says, I am. He's agreeing with them that, that, it's, that, that he is the man, okay? No. He's agreeing no. with them that he is the blind man. He is the blind man who has been made to see, okay? Right. So they ask him and he agrees, I am. Right, let me make I it, agree. do you know what? I'm gonna make it, saying, I'm gonna make it okay? easy for you. Right? I'm gonna make it much more easy for you. Let's go to the, the, the Septuagint, the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament. What does the Septuagint say? In, in Exodus 3.14, what does the Septuagint say? I go me. And what else? What else does it say? It doesn't stop there. Give me the Greek of the Septuagint. Then we will see if we're, what we are saying is true or false. <laughs> Give me the Greek, give me the whole sentence, and then we will see. The sister was doing so good, you should have kept the sister. I'm going to have to look it up for you, okay? 
Anyway, we'll go back to his sister in a minute. But he kept coming in all the time, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you know but can um, we circle Jesus back? is definitely used. In Wait, hold on one second. The title of God there. No, no, he doesn't. I'll tell you why he doesn't. Abraham was, I am. Right. Let okay. me oh. let me correct you. Right. If we go to Exodus 3:14, right? Yeah. Because remember, John 8:58 is taken from Exodus 3:14. Yeah. Correct. Right. If we go to Exodus 3:14, yeah. the Jews they said, right? When I go to the children of Israel, who should I say sent me? Yeah. Right? Does he not say that? What was the response of God in the Greek lexicon, in the Greek Septuagint of the Old Testament? What was the response of God in the Greek? I don't have to have the Greek. Right, I will tell you. I will tell you. I've got the Hebrew, I haven't got the Greek. I, okay. I will tell you both. Okay. I will tell you both. The Greek, Greek, right. In the Greek, in the Greek, it is ego, amai, ho, on. Yes. Ho, on is the manifestation of God. Ho, on is the being. That's why, if you notice, in the translators, they translate it as, I am the being, right? But when we go to X, when we go to John 8, 58, when Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am, we can safely translate that as, I am the one that's been spoken about. That's how it's been translated. It's not translated in a deity form, like what he's saying. That's a mistranslation. In fact, that's why in other translations, they, they, it actually says, I am the being that's been spoken about. It doesn't just say, I am. And that's the reason why in John chapter 9, verse 9, if you notice, it's translated different in John 8, 58, even though the same Greek but word is used. It's interesting that you say that, because I, so, I mean, it's, no, it's good, it's a good, good um, response. But what, what was spoken about Jesus, then I would ask you, is, is what was spoken about him before? That's the question, because if you read even, I don't know if you've ever read the Bible, I know you know a lot of scriptures, but if you could look back even in the Old Testament, there's so much that indicate the coming of Jesus Christ on the earth. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, but it indicates that he would come as the Messiah that would save the people from their sin. That's what, that's what. So even if that is translated in that way. Now, many scholars, many, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a biblical scholar. No, okay? I. But many biblical scholars would even disagree with that and actually would, can prove, I can't, but can prove that he is saying he is God. But even if he's so, not. From, from where? From, from what you've just shared. But, let me, but let I me, went, that's the reason yeah. why I went into the language. Yeah, but I can't defend that because I'm not a scholar. But what I can Fine. say is this. Then we should is leave that, it at. We should... Yeah, okay, well, let's just leave it at that. Okay. But what I would say is this is what was spoken of Jesus? Wait, we're, we're in a discussion. What was spoken of Jesus? What was? Was he spoken about as a prophet that would come with a message from the Most High? Yeah. Or was he spoken of as the Messiah that would, would save the people from their sins? Right. Now, I would argue, and we could sit here in Starbucks all day and talk these things. I, I'm telling you, we could, and I would love to do that, actually. But, you know, what was spoken? I would say he was spoken of as the one that would come and save the people from their sins. Now, I'm not going to go into another verse right now. Go ahead and I'll respond to you. Go ahead, go ahead. And I really, really, really need... Nature is calling. But Fine. read John 1, okay? It all talks about how God would become flesh and make his dwelling on the earth. If you want to go into that, go ahead, go for it. Okay, go for it. John one. Okay, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Even that itself is fathomable. Now, through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay? He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. Yeah. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the true light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through, and though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to, to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, 
He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Listen, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So what is that we, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I would say so what that Jesus? means is that God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. There's so many other verses I could use okay, so let's to, deal with this. to back that up as well. Okay, yeah. so let's deal with this, right? So, John 1.1 1, 1 is in complete contradiction to John 17 verse 3, right? And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. But let's, let's first discuss John 1.1, 1, 1, right? It says, in the beginning was the Word, right? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word is supposed to be who? Jesus, right? Yeah. The, Jesus. Oh, the Greek word used here is Logos, yeah. right? Logos has multiple meanings, yes. right? In fact, the word Logos, you cannot translate Logos as Jesus. You just, um, hold on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, no, hold on one second. Hold on. I was just going to say, hear me out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, so my question then, as you're answering, is this is, what word became flesh? No, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm just okay. trying to respond. I'm talking about from a lexical meaning, from a Greek lexical meaning. If you go to the Greek lexicon, right, you cannot translate Logos as Jesus because there is no lexical meaning using the term Logos to demonstrate Jesus. Logos can have multiple meanings and I'm sure he would actually bear witness to that. Right. But however, in the context of John 1, 1, we can safely say it's translated as Jesus, even though from a lexical meaning, it doesn't carry that meaning. But for argument's sake, let's go with that, right? Yes. So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Again, there's an issue here, because you're saying that Jesus was with God, and that actually makes two gods. That makes two gods, I'm sorry. But it's no, no, hold on one second. Right? One it's second. There, right? This is in complete violation of well, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse well, 4. The next phrase? No, hold on one second. The next phrase? I was Lord patient. Let it, let hold on one second. One second. One second. Us, one second. One second. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So that's two gods there. And in fact, Eusebius, a Christian scholar, right, actually mentions this. Oh, I love this. It's so good. Come on. Right. Eusebius <laughs> mentions that yeah, he, he mentioned John else. okay you can you can do that know, right keep, keep talking. right yeah. if we look, are you familiar with Christian scholarship I do you know what I'm I am I, I mean I won't tell you my whole story but I became a Christian six years ago so okay you know um, yeah that's all you need to know right now right <laughs> if we look at okay let's look at what Christian scholars say about John 1 1 right let's look at Reverend Tom Herper Reverend Tom Herper is a Christian scholar yes. right and he completely agrees that John 1.1 1, 1 is talking about a duality. Okay. You see, this is also of the opinion that John 1.1 1, 1 is talking about a duality. In fact, you see, this even mentions that John 1.1 1, 1 is a com complete violation of the Shema. Do you know what the Shema is? Yes. Right. Shema. If we recite the Shema in Hebrew, it states, It's a Shema Israel Edenai Lochinu Edenai Echad. Right? Yes. Here are Israel. It's fine. Here at Israel, the Lord our God is one. The word echad. What does that word mean? The what translation word? one. It it means unity. Okay, can I interject right it's here? Because I want I have I have a I have a scripture to validate what she just said. Oh, okay. May I please? Go, 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 go. Yes, please. John 17, 22. He says this is Jesus right before he ascended. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. I have given them the glory, them being the people that follow. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity. And you said, you, 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 you just, you tried to debunk the unity part, right? What do you mean? When, when we was over there and you were talking no, about no, unity. No, 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 that, that verse agrees with me. Yeah. Yes. Saying. Yeah, no, 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 because I'm going, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Come on, keep going. Right. Yeah. What I'm saying is that, hold on, I want to get back to that John okay. 17, right? But what I'm saying, right, is that in John... So if the, what you're saying is like a blasphemy, a blasphemy because it talks of there being more than one God. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. And that contradicts, that contradicts so many passages of the Bible, right? But it doesn't contradict, oh, oh. and I can show why. I'll tell you why okay, it does. Okay. 
I tell you why she conf conflict with so many verses. It's in conflict with Deuteronomy chapter six verse four, where it speaks about God being one. It contradicts Mark chapter twelve verse twenty nine, where Jesus says, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord." It contradicts Isaiah chapter forty five, where where God is pronounced as, He says, "God is above on earth and beneath there is no other God." So God is described as no, there's no being on earth that could be God. This is what the Isaiah says. Do you, you, I'm sure you wouldn't disagree with what Isaiah Lord says. Is, uh, the, I agree with you what? that God is way above our ways, way above our thoughts, all of that. I, I just I want to finish responding yeah, to you. Please, Hold on yeah. one second. Right. Please. So John 1.1, 1, 1, according to Christian scholarship, is, is in conflict with the Bible. And I've mentioned Eusebius, and I've mentioned Reverend Tom Herper. And I can keep going on if I wish. Hold on one second. Also, also, it doesn't speak about the oneness of God, it speaks about a duality. And I'm sure you're not a polytheist. As Christians, you're supposed to be a monotheist. You're supposed to believe that God is one, yeah, not do. a duality, yeah, right? So if you believe that God is a polytheist, that God is two in one or three in one, there's a problem. That's not right? That, no, hold on one second. Hold on one second. One second. Thirdly, thirdly, John 1.1 1, 1 doesn't include the Holy Spirit. It only talks about a duality, okay. right? So the question is, where's the Holy Spirit in this? Oh, now that's One, another, that's another wait, wait, conversation. Wait, wait, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. But the, the point is, John 1.1 1, 1 says, on. the word right? was God. Okay. There's, there, there's no mention, there, there's no mention of the Holy Spirit here. We only see the Father. What an argument, I'm here the Son. Absolutely, no, I'm here for the same reason. I'm not here to argue neither. We're here to seek the truth, right? And the truth shall set you free. Yes. Right? Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Yes. So, right. So basically, what I'm saying here, right, is that Jesus clearly. Okay, let's. So, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, right? So now, it's funny, right? Because in the Bible, it clearly says that God cannot be a man. In Numbers chapter no, it 23, say that. It say let, me finish, let me finish. I will, I, I will show you. I will show you. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God, I know, God, God, God I know what it says. He should lie. It does not say God cannot become a man. Should I show you another verse in Hosea? It doesn't say God cannot become a man. It says, God, I am not a man. I should lie. Okay. Okay. I know you're excited. Okay. I know you're excited. Because, because you're saying I, something that the Bible doesn't hold say. On. You're saying know, Numbers 23 right, right, says God cannot hold become on, a man. I know you're excited. And it does not say that. I, I know you're excited. It does not say okay. that. Okay. Okay. Right. Favorite verse of Muslim apologists saying God cannot become a man, but it does not say that. Thank you for your contribution. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Right. There's two verses, right? There's two verses. A clear verse in the book of Hosea, chapter four. It says God is not a man. It's clear as day and night. And yes, God there's numbers. Not a man that he should, should lie. lie. No yeah. son of man that he should change his mind. Hold on. That's okay. so God is wait, not like us. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We are lying. Hold on. We change our mind. Hold on. God is not hold like on. us. Hold on. He is not a man I'm, like I'm us. I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yes. I agree with you. That, but that's yes. Numbers 23 verse 19. I pointed towards another verse where it clearly says God is not a man. But anyway, anyway. Right. Let's continue. Yes, let's right. continue. Come on. In John chapter 17, yes. verse 3. Now, this is an absolute evidence, empirical evidence, that debunks the Trinity and debunks John chapter 1, verse 1. Right? In John 17, verse 3, it says, And this is life eternal, that they may know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So, my question to you is this. Because you are taking John 1 1 as an evidence that Jesus is God, right or wrong? Not only, that's, that's one no, I know, I not only, I know, that's one out of many. That's one yeah. side of the coin. Right? According to John 17, verse 3, who does Jesus identify as the only true God in this in this verse? Elohim, God. Case closed. Yeah. Okay. So if so hold on one second. If the if if Jesus admits from his own testimony that the Father is the only true God. Yes. Right? The Father is the only true God. Then so how is the Jesus God, God as well? The Spirit is the only true God. Yeah, but okay, listen. Ella, and okay, I talk to Muslim brothers and sisters all the time. Okay. okay? okay. And it's this, it's this. You, it, it's not, it's not case closed. Okay, because Jesus has already said on so many occasions throughout that he, referring to who the, who, 
in his relationship with the father, how the father sent him, you know, like, so it's not case closed, okay? Because we can continue this discussion using so many other Bible verses. But let me, let me come to Genesis 1, where God created the earth. I don't know whether you know about this verse, okay? I want, I want, I want your opinion on this, okay? Genesis 1, verse 26 says this. Let us make then man in God, our image. Yeah, right? okay, you know, you're, a, you, you, you're experienced yeah, at this, yeah, right? Yeah, we do this all the time. Okay, this is my first time. Said, yeah, you know. Okay. Let, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, yeah. over all the creatures that move up, uh, along the ground. That us, let us make man in our image. Again, it's actually coming back to what you said where we say that this um, the two gods, the two gods thing that you come to before. Like there is again that this indication that God is speaking to somebody else within himself about making creating things only God can create right but why is God saying let us make man in our image for me that indicates again that's only this is only one place where this is indicated okay but it indicates that God is more than just one okay in, and I'm not saying that there's more than one God I'm saying there's well, one God. Well, you're kind of saying that. That's no, not what she's saying. I am somehow, saying the one God is plural. I am that somehow, saying one that God, God that indicates the triune God that we believe That's in. I don't right. believe in three gods. I believe in one God, but he is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That is partly why I believe that, because it's indicated in the word of God that I claim to be the word of God. Let Should us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. We are one, but three. Yeah, so that's where we where we Okay, can shall I respond? Yeah, please do. I right, think it's okay. Thank you to go on. That's the call of nature. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I wanna I wanna I, wanna, I really need the toilet but I'll wait. Okay, uh, okay, we can conclude on this if you wish. Right. Now Arabic? Yes. And Hebrew are Semitic languages, okay. right? They are Semitic languages. Okay. So what you will find is that there are some words, right, that have similarities. Right? I'll give an example. In the Quran, Allah says, um, oh, sorry, in, I recite in Arabic. It says, وَلَقَدْ كَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانُ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْفِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ Verily, وَلَقَدْ كَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانُ Verily, we have created man. Right? And we know what himself whispers to him. Yes. The word the Arabic word We know, right? Allah used the word we here. No, the word nahnu means we. We know what his what himself whispers. Right? Another verse in the Quran, Allah says, Nahnu kalakunakum. We have created, right? Now let's go to the reason why I mentioned this Arabic because the word Nahnu means we, but it's 